Father Musa Zarai. His phone rings. And it happens to be people on a plastic dinghy in the middle of the Mediterranean. He thought it was a crank call. Quickly realized it wasn't when he heard their screaming and crying for help. He connected with the Coast Guard and all 300 were rescued. He later learned that his phone number was actually written on the walls of a Libyan detention center as someone to call in case of emergency. And his number is still there, along with dozens of testimonials about the number of lives he saved. Faith is this fire hose for Father Zarai, keeping him going in the face of insurmountable crisis and trauma. Dr. Donald Miller and his team at the University of Southern California asked dozens of journalists to profile highly regarded people whose faith and spiritual practices fuel their humanitarian work. These 104 spiritual exemplars represent 42 different countries, places as diverse as the United States, Guatemala, Indonesia, and Israel. We really wanted them to be representative of the global population, both in geography and in global religious demographics. So Christians at roughly 30%, Muslims at roughly 24%, unaffiliated and Hindus at roughly 15 to 16%. And I would say we got very close to both our geographic spread and our demographic goals for religious adherence, though the pandemic made it a little bit challenging. Often the narrative about religion that we hear, that gets clicks, that sells papers, is usually about bad religion. There are reasons to see the shadow side of religious institutions and individuals who claim to speak for God. But the flip side is that there are also individuals addressing issues of justice, equity, poverty, climate change. And so it was an opportunity to tell a different kind of story about religion around the world. The journalists chosen for the project came away with exceptional stories about exceptional people, people whose work is rooted in their spirituality, they are kind of driven to do the work that they do because of a certain calling. But in that calling itself, there is some strong element of spirituality. These individuals are very non-materialistic. They have a purpose in life to live for others rather than themselves. They tend to be characterized by having a deep empathy, identifying with the pain and suffering of others. In Tunisia, this person called Badar Babu, he wanted to explore the possibility of finding safe spaces for the LGBTQ community. And they've told him that they're going to burn him down, put him into prison. But Badar has been able to create several safe spaces in Tunis and outside of Tunis as well. I ended up actually profiling for women and in our world, it's most often women who are doing some of the most impactful work as religious actors in the humanitarian sphere, whatever issue that might be. To date, the 100 Exemplar Stories Project has produced videos and articles that have appeared in media outlets ranging from the New York Times to Al Jazeera, the Christian Science Monitor, and the Harvard Divinity Bulletin. The impact is being felt not just by those who read and hear these stories, but also by the journalists who wrote them. It was very beautiful to experience people within their cultures and within their spiritual beliefs in different parts of the world. I don't see things as black and white anymore, but there's like all other colors that they can have. Here are these people who are kind of unseen and yet they're changing so many lives out there. Some, like in the case of Tuen Jaitids, hundreds of thousands of lives are getting their citizenships in mm -hmm. Thailand, where for generations they were stateless. I went to Plum Village to look at the monastic community there, and one of their requirements is to come in and actually be a part of the retreat, experience what life is like there. I did that three months before the pandemic, then three months before I got a cancer diagnosis. I saw how spiritual practices such as mindfulness can help us through personal and societal crises. My career has been split between studying genocide and projects that have hope involved in them. This project has been filled with joy. It's not just about what you believe, it's about what you feel.
related to compassion, empathy for others. The project really has challenged me personally, and in talking to a number of the journalists, they have told me the same thing.